Okay, so we have been talking about logic, propositional logic, and now predicate logic, logic. But of course, if you think about what 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 it conjures, if the word logic is that the the the, the act of doing logic is about reasoning, right? making doing logical conclusions, and we have not talked much about that yet. And that is exactly what we're going to talk about now. And so this is called um, uh, rules of inference, to infer something, uh, or sometimes rules of, of, of proof, proving or deduction. There's many different words that you can use here. Um, and so what we want to talk about today is, <coughs> what we see is, and, and uh, I will split this in two. Uh, this video, the part one here, will be on <coughs> um, doing this for propositions. And uh, and then later we'll see what happens if we add uh, quantifiers and predicates to the whole s story. But I, I want to give you a historical example. It's a very well known one. There's um, the, the state. We have two statements here. So um, P is the statement Pythagoras, the Greek philosopher mathematician, is a man. I mean, I think this is due to Plato, who was a student of Pythagoras. Uh, Q is a statement, um, a man is mortal, okay, and then the conclusion is, so, and we would do this like this, Pythagoras is mortal. <coughs> Okay, so uh, why does one, is this, a, we, we all accept that this is a valid conclusion. And why is this a co considered a valid conclusion? Now, before I go on, I should say that I'm actually presenting you the, this um, statement in a, in a way that avoids predicates. But the original statement is actually, uh, has a predicate in it, and let me therefore uh, mention it to you, and we will, as I said, to discuss this later. Namely, it would say that all men are mortal, and there we see the predicate, yeah? So for all x, for all men, px, the man is mortal, mx, eh? m means, mx meaning x is mortal, and then p, Pythagoras is a man. That, that is, of course, a single statement here. And so from these two, one can also make a conclusion, but that uses a different kind of uh, conclusion, uh, reasoning. So... This one is, in some sense, a little bit uh, easier. And so it says that um, we... Okay, so um, keep this so keep this as an example in mind of what what we consider a valid um, reasoning. but let's let's look at something that is perhaps a bit more straightforward, something like, I'm taking something from the, the the book, and it says, for instance, if you have a current password, then you can log on to the work network, and you have a current password. Okay, so if you want to say this in other words, if you have a CUNY first password, you can log on into Blackboard, and the second statement is, I have a CUNY first login account uh, credentials password, so I can log in. So let's try to. Uh, schematize this a little bit. So it says that so P is um, have valid password and Q is can log in. Okay, so the statement is if you have a valid password then you can log in. So this would be if P then Q. It would be an implication, right? That was the first sentence. What is the next sentence? I have a Password that is Q. Uh, sorry, P, P, <laughs> not, not Q, sorry. P, right? I have a, so. So we have these two statements, P and Q, and also P holds. And so therefore we say the conclusion. So this, this three dots is a way of formaling, formalizing, uh, you can conclude. And notice that we also put a line. What this means is that what follows under the line is a conclusion that that comes from the the statements that are made above the line. So what I'm actually uh, presenting to you is what we call a, a proof system, 
where we have various uh, ex we, we, if you we have done some proofs a little bit you have seen proofs in the, in the past it's a bunch of statements one after the other and normally one follows from the other okay so it's a sequence of deductions and so when we when we uh, write so in this case we have two statements and from that we want to deduce a new statement so that's what this line and the symbol all, both together mean uh, the line is just to make to make a distinction between what comes from before it and what we the, the uh, conclude and so the conclusion is if you have a valid password then you can log in you have a valid password so you can log in hence q and that's a kind of obvious thing right if you say if p is true then q follows well P is true. Well, okay, then Q follows. Okay, so that is um, and what now these things are being studied for a long, long time in in um, in uh, human history. For instance, Pythagoras, Plato, Plato, and others have been. Um, the Greeks have studied it, but not only the Greeks, but we, we know best Greek mathematics in that sense about logic. They we have more writings of them. And so uh, this has got, uh, received a name, but it, somehow we uh, now use the Latin name. And this is called, and that is something you have to get used to, but we're going to use this. So modus ponens. Okay. And it helps to understand what these words mean. So I'm going to teach you a little bit uh, Latin. Modus is the same as mode. So it's a mode, it's a particular mode of thinking, and the mode of thinking is ponens. Now, ponens is, consists of two parts. The, the, the verb is ponere, which means to put, to put down, to, and therefore to affirm, to confirm. Now, the ENS means it is, uh, as our English, in. So it is putting down, affirming. Okay, so and, and, and the fact that it's E and S and in English it's E, I and G, it's not a surprise, it's not by coincidence that they're so similar because they are both languages coming from uh, one old ancient language we would, what we call Indo-European. Many of the languages that we know come from that one single language and therefore are so similar. Okay, so this means the mode of affirming. And this is what you have. You make a statement, P then Q, and now you have also that P is true. Now you are, therefore you confirm, yes, if P then Q, and I also know that P, therefore Q. Okay? So that is what we call modus ponens. Now there are many, many more, and what we're gonna do is look at all of them, and uh, we we kind of not all of them are as important as as the others, but I wanna uh, point out one in particular that is very important and uh, also carries a Latin name. Okay, so let's look at the same thing here. P has a valid, P, we have a valid password. Q is can log in. What about this statement? So this was modus ponens, remember? Th this one will be some called something else. The same statement. If you have a valid password, then you can log in. Now, Suppose you cannot log in. What does that mean? It can only mean one thing. If you cannot log in, that means you don't have a valid password. So the conclusion is not P. That's perhaps a little bit surprising if you see it formally like that. If in this particular example it's kind of clear. But it might not always be so uh, obvious. So let me give you, well, first of all, I give you, let me tell you what the name is of this thing. This is called modus tollens. So it's very similar in name, and that's perhaps sometimes something that you have to get used to. But here, tollens, uh, so modus again, the mode, tollens means to carry, tolere is to carry. So it's the the, the the mode of carrying, where the other one was the mode of putting. Okay, it might not immediately clear why this is why we call this right, but you see what it, what the differences are. In the first case, 
we have a positive confirmation of the hypothesis. In the second case, we have a negative confirmation of the conclusion. And therefore, we conclude that this is. Now, when I do this on the app example, I think you understand that this makes sense, right? But what is really going on? And I want to show you what is really going on. Well, this is logically equivalent, and there are many things that is logically equivalent to, but one it is logically equivalent to is contraposition. This is logically equivalent with not Q, then not P. That's something we did a few lessons ago. Now look, if, if I would use it this way, and I still have not Q, right? That hasn't changed. Now, not Q implies not P, whatever that means, right? But we know that not Q is true, therefore not P. And that's exactly what we conclude. So in other words, what I'm trying to say is if you, the green part here is logically equivalent, and then you do actually modus ponens on that green one to make your conclusion. So modus ponens and modus tollens are two, let's say, two coins, or two sides of the same coin of the same thing. There are just two different ways of formulating the thing. But it can be very, very useful in arguments to have both of them. So that's why we give a name to both of them. Now, it might have been something you say, well, it surprises me. I would have thought, so I'm going to do it in red because it's wrong, that it would be this, P then Q and not P, therefore not Q, right? Let's think about this. Even in this simple example, it's clear that this is not correct. Remember, in red means it's not correct, right? So don't 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 start jotting this down already. Uh, why? Let's think about it. If you have a valid password, then you can log in. I do not have a valid password. So okay, you you might say okay, yeah, you then you cannot log in. Well, what about if you? Uh, if you don't have a valid password, you cannot log in. Yeah, I guess perhaps this is not the best uh, case because it, it kind of... Um, it, in fact, we actually say you have, if you, have a valid, you, you can log in even only if you have a valid password. Okay? So, but if you don't have a valid password, well, let's think about it. Suppose that um, this is an old system and in the system old valid password or current passwords can be used, but the system somehow doesn't delete the pre-old users. So even if your password is no longer current, it could still be that you can log in. Now, I agree, this is not a good example. So let's do another example where you hopefully have... Um, okay, so let's see. Um, I'm going to make a different statements and then convince you that the, the last one that I wrote down is false. Okay, so let's let's do this. Uh, now I'm going to use red, perhaps. Okay, P is the statement, uh, if it rains, I stay home. Okay. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, I, I'm writing down the P and Q, sorry. Uh, I'm, I'm saying it wrong. P is it rains, it is raining, and Q is this meaning I stay home. Okay, and so P then Q, if, if it's raining, then I stay home. That's P then Q. Not P, it's not raining. Does that now necessarily mean that I will not stay home? No. Because oh, I might just be too tired. I mean, if it's raining, I will stay home because I don't like to walk in the rain. That's what is the, the content of that statement. If, if it's raining, I stay home. But there might be other occasions in which I decide to stay home. For instance, if it's too hot outside, I'm going to stay home too. It's not raining, but I still stay home. So I hope that uh, it's now clear that this is a false conclusion. If you, And that is sometimes a bit the problem with... Um, with concrete information, when, when you have concrete information, it's sometimes not immediately clear whether you, uh, an argument is correct or not. And it's only because you formalize it, you can see that it is not correct. Okay? So, 
Let's look at what are all these. We have now seen two modus ponens, modus tollens, and then this is modus, modus nonsense. Okay? Don't use that. But be careful. A lot of people use this. Okay? Because it's sometimes when, it, when I say, okay, people sometimes, if I say, if it's raining, I stay home. You could interpret this as meaning that's the only way that I'm going to stay home if it's raining. It's not what I said, but it could be understood that way. And then if, I, if it's not raining, then I will not stay home. Okay? This was exactly what happened in the previous statement. When if you have a current password, then you can log in. And you, and you didn't have a current password, so the accept, the the meaning of the, con the the sentence was not formulated correctly. The correct formulation would be is you can log in only if you if and only if you have a valid password, which is what it should be, right? So that's where English sentences sometimes mislead us, and there are, people can use this to give us false arguments. Okay. So what are now the valid arguments? Formally, logically, they are the valid ones, and. Uh, again, I'm not going to prove all of these, but uh, here is a list. I took it from the um, textbook. So notice we have here our already um, previously mentioned modus ponens. P, P then Q. It, it's written in the opposite way, in the different order. That's another thing. When we deduce from a bunch of statements a new statement, the order in which these these previous statements are presented does not really matter. Okay, so here they produce it, they give it this way. Uh, this is then therefore our modus tollens, right? If you have an implication, but the conclusion is false, then you mean then you know that the hypothesis must be false because if the hypothesis is true, then the conclusion is true, and it is not, right? Okay, so that's modus tollens. Now what you see here in the middle is saying that there are actually uh, tautologies. Remember, a tautology is that is no matter what P and Q are, this, these statements are always true. I'm not going to pay too much attention to that, but I just want to show you that is the, the proof that these rules of inference are correct. Namely, you have to show by using a truth table, if you remember from the first sessions, uh, that this is a tautology. So in other words, no matter the values of P and Q, this always comes out to be 1, true. What does it say? P and P then Q implies Q. That's exactly the content of this rule of inference. Okay. Now, I'm not going to go to all the rest of them, but you see it is backed up by logic, so to speak. Now, let's look at a couple of them. And this is another very important one. And uh, this is the kind, the one that, we, that I just described describe somehow. Um, so this is if P then Q. And Q implies R, well, it's kind of like you can go from one to the other, okay? P implies R. This is called hypo, hypo, hypothetical syllogism, yeah? And so somehow, sometimes this original thing from Pythagoras is phrased that way. So uh, let me erase P and Q here because I'm now using it in a different way. So uh, what, what one will say is, if you're a man, then you're mortal. Uh, sorry, no, that's not very bad. Sorry, sorry, I'm saying the wrong. So I, I wrote it right and I wrote it, yeah. If Pythagoras is a man, and if a man, if you're a man, then you're mortal. Let me write it up this way, okay? I'll let me rewrite it, because otherwise, if I say it, might be a little bit. So, I'll do it in green. If Pythagoras is a man... Uh, what? No, sorry, I lost my train of thought here. Uh, no, sorry, sorry, I, I lost my train of thought. I said it wrong. Okay. If you are... Pythagoras, then you are a man, if you are a man, 
men here human no it doesn't necessarily talk about being it's not about men or women here but if you're a man then you're mortal so what is the conclu conclusion now so if this is an p this would be q this is q and this is r right so p then from p to q from q to r p then r if you're pythagoras then you're mortal okay so it says if you're pythagoras then you are a man and if you're a man then you are mortal and therefore p then r okay it's not a very telling uh, argument I admit here a little bit I had to tweak it a little bit because as I said original one is actually with um, using um, a quantification and we will I'll, 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 we'll look at it later okay so this is a rule of uh, hypothetical syllogism so this is an, another important name here that we have hypothetical syllogism and in some sense if these three are the main ones and there are a couple of other ones here um, I'm not going to look at all of these because we not they're not always, well, okay, they are used here. Let, let's look at this one. What does this one say? P or Q, but not P. Well, if it, P or Q is true, that means that P must be true, or Q must be true, or both. Now, we know the next thing says, well, P is not true. Ah, if P is not true... But P or Q is true, the only way that can happen is that's because Q is true. Okay? Um, I'm not going to use these names anymore. It's these three names, so let me therefore uh, mark them in like uh, purple. It's these three that really are used, the names that we use often. And they are used most of the time. So it's the, these, the three, the three major ones. Modus bonus, bonus tonus, and hypothetical syllogism. Also sometimes just called syllogism. Uh, so let's look at the next one. Um, P, P or Q. That sounds a bit weird, right? So this would say, I am Pythagoras. And this say, I am Pythagoras or I am a cat. Yeah, okay. If, 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 if you're Pythagoras, if that's the case, then it's also the case that I am Pythagoras or I am a cat is also true. That's true, okay? This is some, they, they call this addition here. P and Q. If I'm Pythagoras and I'm a cat, well, in particular, I'm Pythagoras. That's what this says. And of course, by the way, this also, from this, you can also conclu conclude that I'm a cat. Q is also true. So let me add that here, although it's not mentioned here, but this is true that also Q follows from that. So not one thing, but two things follow from here, okay? That can happen too. And this, sometimes you have to be flexible here. If you want, of course, be the, the, the real thing behind this is that these two things are logically equivalent. The order in which we take a conjunction is uh, not important. And then the, last, the, the next one is also kind of obvious. P, P, that's a true statement. Q, true statement. Well, then, of course, P and Q is a true statement. That's just conjunction, right? This one, I, they give a name to it, but I'm not going to uh, uh, discuss it too much. Okay, so that's the rules of inference. No, inference, sorry. So let's now see whether we can put this to work. Okay. So let me give you one more uh, example of the hypothetical syllogism. The example that I gave with Pythagoras was perhaps a little bit confusing, so I did another one. So again with the rain. So P, it, it is raining. Q is the statement... Um, We have a barbecue. BBQ. And uh, R is a proposition. We have a barbecue today. Sorry. And R is a proposition. Well, in the textbook they say... Okay. Okay, I'll, I'll follow the textbook. In the textbook, they take the negative here. I, I, I thought I was not going to do that, but this perhaps better. We don't have a barbecue today. And R is we have a barbecue tomorrow. So 
So it is raining today, I should add this here, right? So, okay, what is the, the thing here? If it's raining today, then we won't have a barbecue today, okay? Now, this is the, the nice part of the promise. If we don't have a barbecue today, then we will have it tomorrow. So it's kind of a guarantee, we're gonna have a barbecue, don't worry, okay? So what is now the conclusion, hypothetical syllogism? Well, if it's raining today, then we will have a barbecue tomorrow. Notice that on its own this might not sound correct, but it is correct because we have been told that these two truths are valid. Okay? So, of course, we are assuming that this is true, and we assume that that is true. It might be not true in some certain circumstances, but we are in, let's say, my mom has promised this. She says, okay, if we don't have a barbecue today, we will have it tomorrow. And then dad says, yeah, but if it's raining today, we're not going to have a barbecue today. Okay, so if it's now raining today, then the conclusion is we will have a barbecue tomorrow. It's perfectly correct and makes sense, right? And this is hypothetical syllogism. Now, okay, this is still simple. Let's make it a little bit, bit involve a little bit more stuff. And then you'll see exactly why I'm calling this proofs and mode of infer inferences and so on. Okay, so P is the same in, uh, it's sunny, it is sunny, um, it is sunny this afternoon, okay, a Q is the statement, sorry, uh, it's colder than yesterday, It's colder today, sorry, it is colder, um, sorry, sorry, let me see here, it's colder today, I guess, yeah, than yesterday, they didn't send us here. The next one is, uh, we will go swimming. And the next statement is, we take a canoe trip. And the last statement is, uh, we will be home by sunset. Now, what I did here is actually, I turned the, the um, example in the textbook a little bit upside down. Um, I'm doing this uh, to make it a little bit easier to understand. There is one other complication, is namely, is that you have to come up yourself with PQR as in T, or variants of that. Now, okay, so what is the what is the thing here? So the problem says this. We, the, the following statements have been made. It's not sunny this afternoon and it's, and it's colder than yesterday. That's one thing, truth. It is not sunny this afternoon and it's colder than yesterday. We will go swimming only if it's sunny. If we do not go swimming, then we will take a canoe, canoe trip. If we take a canoe trip, then we will be home by sunset. Okay? So, um, yeah. Perhaps I should... I'm going to write on the statements. So, it, so I'm going to write quotes, meaning these are true statements. So, not sunny. Uh, this, uh, this PM, this afternoon. Uh, and colder than yesterday. I'm going to write it a little bit quicker, right? The second statement... So, okay, I'm going to write the statements, and what the, our first goal is, write these statements down in a, using logic and using these propositions, these names for these propositions. So that's one statement. The next statement is... Um, we will go swimming only if it's not sunny if it is not sunny this afternoon okay the third statement is if we do not go swimming
sorry, swimming. Then we go canoeing. Let me write it just like this. I'm not sure that how you spell canoeing, but okay. And then finally, if we canoe, meaning if we take a canoe trip, then home by sunset. Okay, so these are the four statements. And the first thing that we have to now do is using these va propositional variables, P, Q, R, S, and T, they stand for these particular sentences, write these like that. Let's look, look at the first one. It's not sunny this afternoon and it is colder than yesterday. So we see that this involves these, these two guys, right? P and Q. And what it does it actually say? It says it's not sunny, not P. It is colder today than yesterday. It says that. So end Q. There's an end here, so it's important that we pay attention also to how these are the statements are made, right? If there would be an or, that would be a different thing. Mm -hmm. So what else? Uh, what else do we have? Um, we will go swimming only if it's not sunny. So okay, this is a bit weird English, of course. Only if it's not sunny. So, it what does that mean here? Another way of saying this is that if we go swimming, then it must be sunny, right? So one way of, of formulating that, oh, sorry, is uh, if we go swimming, then it's sunny. I agree that there are other ways of writing down this statement using, for instance, if it's not sunny, then we will not go swimming, it would also be correct, that's the contrapositive of what I wrote down. And that, that is, of course, uh, sometimes because English is not mimicking, literally, our formal logic system. We have already uh, encountered this several times in homeworks and in other problems. So, but this is definitely one of the things, like, right? that, that we rewrite, reread this, R, if R then P, if we will go, go swimming, then it is sunny this afternoon. We will go swimming only if it's not sunny. Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, <laughs> I, I I said it. Yeah, no, no, right, right. No, wait. Um, wait. Yeah, sorry. No, no, I got myself confused. We will go swimming. We will go swimming only if it's not sunny. No, no, <laughs> I'm so sorry about it. I, the first time I read it correctly, and now the second time I said so, not sunny. Of course, we will go swimming if it's sunny. Duh. Okay, sorry about that. That's why I confused myself a little bit. I had I, I had said it right, I think, the first time, but then I wrote it wrong the second time. So, right. So, that's, of course, what I meant to say, right? We will go swimming only if it's sunny. That means that if we go swimming, then it must be sunny. R then P. Okay. So the next statement is, uh, if we do not go swimming, then we'll take a canoe trip. So now we are talking about uh, P and S. And how does it say? Well, not P implies S. Right? Wait, am I reading this now wrong? I'm sorry about this. Um, the textbook has sometimes... I'm, I'm trying to just double check what the... Wait, so... Um, this, if we do not go swimming... Oh, sorry, if we do not go swimming. Sorry, I'm sorry, sorry. I apologize, I got confused by this and then I got completely torn off. Okay, let, let, let's go back to what I was trying to say. Let's see. If we do not go swimming, so we are talking about not R, then we go canoeing. We're talking about S. So not R implies S. Okay, all right. And then the last sentence says, let's, let's mark it, it's because I didn't point and that's why I got myself confused. If we canoe, so if we are, if S true, then home by some set, then T. If S, then T. Okay. Now, we, I haven't said actually what we can conclude from that. So, 
the purpose now is conclude the following thing that might not be immediately clear that these statements imply in particular that we will be home by two, sunset now I admittedly you can argue yourself in, in, in just with words that this is the case and, this, and, the, and, the, and the story would something be like that yeah it's too cold and that's why we didn't go swimming so that's why we went uh, canoeing and because we went canoeing we will be home by sunset but let's see how this will plays out logically okay so what we need to prove is so to show t that that's that statement we will be home by sunset so how does t follow from these um <coughs> data okay Okay, so how do you solve this? This is not so easy if you want to do this formally. And you somehow have to go backwards, try to reason backwards. Let's see. There's only one statement that involves T, and that is the last one. And so if I want to conclude T, then I should have S, because then I'm in the case of uh, modus ponens. If you have the premise and they have an implication, then the conclusion is true. Okay, if you have the hypothesis, so if we can prove S, then we can glue the T. So how do we can talk about S? Now, S only can be referred, is only appears other than in this one, in this one. And again, if we want to infer S, well, we should have not R. Now, where is R? This guy talks about R. And, but now, look, it's no longer R at the back here, R is in the front. And in fact, we don't want R, we want not R. Okay, so, so it seems that we want to have to work our way back up to the very first st statement. Now, what can we do? We know that not P and Q. Remember, one of the rules here, and this is actually the one that I had said here, actually means that if you have a statement of an, a conjunction, then you know that each of the so-called conjuncts, each of the subparts must be true. Okay, so from this line and, and so in the book numbers them i'm going to just do, draw errors from this we can conclude not p i can also conclude q but if you notice q is actually not playing a role in the rest of the argument and if you hear this thing it's it, that colder than yesterday what on earth did that to do with us coming home today right there was nothing else about yesterday anymore okay so i'm going with not p so from that i conclude not p now I have, now these two, I can put together as follows. I have R then P, so I'm using this guy now. And I have not P, which I just got here. I'm putting them both here. So this is how I, I'm going to present it, right? I'm going to tell you always where they come from. And so the idea is, anything that I have already obtained in my previous list, so I'm creating a list of statements, and all these statements are true. Okay, and that is what inference means. And I can use anything in the previous list to conclude the new thing. So here's my new conclusion. Because why am I... This is something that I previously proved. Okay, it's now part of my list. That was my first step. Put it in the list. This was already in the list. Sometimes it's called an action or a premise. And this is something that we concluded. Now what can we do with this one? Oh, this doesn't work. The, no, the P is on the wrong side. Is it? Remember... Modus tollens. If you have an implication, but the conclusion is not true, then you know that the hypothesis could not be true. So what we can conclude from this is, very careful, not R, right? Not R. Good. Remember, I'm getting trying to get T, and for that I needed S. Ah, but now I'm getting there, right? So what I'm going to do next, I'm going to use this guy. I... Uh, it's there, I don't need to copy it, but it is clear if I copy it one more time. I have this guy, so I'm going to copy the two. Mm, that's okay. We often improves one, repeats oneself, just to make it clear for everybody that is uh, trying to follow the argument here. So, the two sentences or two statements I wrote down are two statements because they come from my previous list. And so now I can conclude. So, okay, I should have put this here. This was modus, what was it? Modus tollens, right? I said I'm not going to give a name to this one here. Now what I'm going to use here? Modus ponens. I hope that is 
clear? Because now I have the hypothesis, I have an implication, so the conclusion must be true. S. And you see the way now towards T? Yes, I use this guy. So S then T. I use this guy, S. S. And again, more exponents allows me to conclude T. Okay, so that's uh, how rules of inference work. Um, I'll do one more uh, from the book also, and this time I'm gonna tell you the, the I'm gonna do the problem um, without actually already telling you what P, Q, and R, whatever are. So here are the statements. If you send me email, sorry, I, I'm dropping a little bit. The English is not very nice, but it make, make it shorter. Then I finish the essay. I, you have to remind me, otherwise I'm not going to do it, okay? If you do not send email to me, but okay, that's clear, I hope, um, then I go sleep early. Then I go sleep early. Okay, like meaning, okay, you didn't tell me anything, so I just went to sleep. If I go sleep early, if I go sleep early, what happens then? Probably I'm going I'm to be good, uh, but what happens then? Then I will be wake up refreshed. Refreshed in the morning. That's good, I guess. And then finally, um, oh no, that's it. That's all the three. That's the three statements only. Let me double check here. Uh, yep. So conclude from these statements the following: If I do not finish the essay. Then I will wake up refreshed. Then I will wake up refreshed. Again, you might somehow see why this is true, but let's now, the whole point is, on a test, on a quiz, I need to see this solved the way I'm going to solve it now, not just by, oh, by words, by saying in words what you think is going on, I'm not saying it is wrong, but that's not a course. The course is about formal logic and rules of inference, and that's what you have to present, be able to present. So let's give names to everything here. Um, let's call this uh, class P. You sent me an email. Oh, sorry, not the if, right? You sent me an email that is P. Then uh, let's call, uh, I finish essay, let's call that Q. Okay, so what is this then? Then, well, we know what this is. That's not P then, right? So, this part here. That's going to be not P, so I don't need to give a new name for it. I go sleep early. That I am going to call that... Uh, I'm going to follow the book here. Um, R. Um, ah, this is the same guy. I go sleep early. That's R again. So, this was not P, right? I'm going to... This was R again. And then, uh, finally, this one, I'll, I'll call this S, I think. Yeah, this will be called... I will wake up refreshed S. So let's, each of these statements must now result into a propositional expression. Okay, the first one says, if P, then Q. Very easy. What's the second one say? So let's call them 1, 2, and 3, so that you can follow. This is 1. 2 says, if you not, not P, then R. And 3 says, R, then S. So what is now what I have to do? I have to start from, so, to show. So what is the thing that I have to show? Because that's also something that I have to write down uh, in a formal way. Previous time it was easy, it was just one proposition, but here it's a bit more complicated. It actually is a, um, an if-then statement. So let's see. What is this one? That's the negation of Q, right? It's not Q, it's an if, then what happens? Wake up refreshed, that was S. So not Q... Oh, what was that for a weird thing? 
Yeah, and that's weird, but that, that somehow it... Okay, now I can... S. Okay. So, how am I going to get to this particular guy? Okay. And what this shows is that it might... Okay, what we have is... There's a... a, a the first thing we should you should think of, I mean, uh, I don't know, granted, you know, this is new all to you, but if you do this a lot, the first thing comes in mind is, oh, this is about different implications and we can con somehow concatenate them, right? P then Q, Q then R, so P then R. So we're thinking hypothet hypothetical syllogisms. Does this, but that means you have to have this kind of match matchup, right? This conclusion must be the premise for the next one. Must be the hypothesis for the next one. Let's see. Do are we in such a situation? Uh, this yes, this fits well. Oh dear, this doesn't fit. This is, doesn't fit at all. Now, one thing that we are allowed to do, and that is, uh, is somehow different from the, using the rules of inference, is using logical equivalences. What is this logical equivalent to? We have talked about this. I've given it already when we talked the. the when we showed that modus tollens and modus pollens were really one, uh, one, two birds of the same feather. No, it is one third, two coins, two sides of the same coin. That's the, uh, namely contraposition. Not Q, then not P. So although I formulated this as if you send me an email, then I finish the essay. I could have said if I do not finish the essay, that means that you didn't send me an email. So if I don't send the, finish the essay, that means you have not sent me, then you did not send me an email, correct? That's the same content. That's because logically they are equivalent. Now we are gone, right? Now we can, now our, we can uh, put our uh, hypothetical syll syllogism, I know it's a weird, bit weird word, but okay, hypothetical syllogism uh, at work. Not Q, let, 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 I'll, I'll show the steps. Not Q, then not P not P, then R. So on these two, sorry, that's not what I meant to do. On these two, I'm going to use uh, my hypothetical, hypothetical logism that says the, the, first, the first hypothesis implies the last conclusion. And now I can concatenate this with three here. So here now I put R, then S underneath of it. And again, I can con uh, conclude with hypothe hypo hypothetical syllogism. Sorry, I'm getting... I'm stumbling over my own uh, words here. I can again concatenate, right? So we have again, this implies that, and then that same thing implies the next thing, so this must imply that. So not Q implies S, and that's exactly what I wanted, okay? So we can use the rules of inference just straightforwardly, or sometimes we can play smart and we, we can replace a, a particular a statement by a logically equivalent statement. And this, this means that there's, that also means there are many ways of doing it, and that makes it sometimes a bit difficult uh, to say whether is something is correct or not, because there's so many different ways you can go this, go by this, but there's often a, a shortest and most, like, a, an optimal way to do this, and this definitely is one of them. Okay, um... So I talked already about what would be uh, the wrong conclusions, right? So I um, I don't want to talk about that now again. And so this is, uh, as far as I want to go, about rules of inference involving just propositions. And so the next part will be on quantified statements.